Hi everyone, had a few emails in regarding airlocks um, and problems with airlocks. Um, now there's two different types of airlock in systems really. Uh, one is in your hot water system when you find um, you, you don't get any water out of the hot tap. Uh, and you can find it's either a reoccurring problem that happens all the time or it may have just have happened out of the blue. Okay, I'm going to look at the various problems to do with that one, uh, and then I'm going to move on to central heating air locks, which is another area where you can get a lock and find your central heating won't run. If, for instance, you've taken a radiator off the wall uh, and refilled it and found that it's not going, um, the system stopped dead, where, where to look for the air and where to get it out. But first of all, deal with um, hot water air locks. Um, now, getting the air out of these, first of all, I deal with is a bit of a problem if you've got this type of tap. Um, mixers which most people have these days I mean this is a mixer thing like this um, now some old mixers the older type you could put your hand under there like so uh, open it up and it would force the water back round and up the hot water one well these days they don't the more modern tap won't allow that to happen and it, even worse today you'll find that a lot of taps have got uh, a non-return valve on the pipe to the hot to stop that going back down there anyway so you won't be able to clear it that way at all so it is a bit of a problem and um, the best bet is to go into your bathroom um, which we'll do now we'll just shoot into the bathroom up the stair now again what do you find modern day bathroom well we have mixer taps on the basin as well so we've got the same problem well we'll go to the bath tap no we've got one of these fancy taps on here so this does make sorting out an airlock a bit of a problem if you've got these type of taps. If you've got two single taps, just two taps, it's dead easy. You just get a short bit of hose pipe, put one to the other, open the hot one, open the cold one, and let it blast through, and it'll blow the air out, and you'll find uh, it will be to good. No, no longer about 10 or 15 seconds. You should hear a bubbling up near the tank. When you hear that, you know it's clear. Just turn the cold one back off, pull the other one back off, and let it run. But, as I say, if you've got these type of taps um, all round and you can't clear them, not even by putting your hand over because they're too modern, then you'll find you've got a bit of a problem. And the only way around that then um, is a bit of a headache. Yes, the only way is to um, turn your hot water off. And what I would do on the kitchen side here, I would do it, is um, if you've got a valve, especially if you've got a little pet valve to turn hot water off, which a lot of taps have these days, is I would turn the hot water off to that tap. Um, undo the valve, the top of the valve, and stick an outside hose pipe on it. Connect it to your outside tap, if you've got an outside tap out of the side, hopefully you have. Um, connect the hose through, connect it straight onto the, the valve, and then open the valve so that it's on, and then blast your mains water through that valve, and you should hear a bubbling again. Once it's gone, try your, your tap in the bathroom to see if it's all clear. If it is, obviously, turn the little valve back off, take your hose back off and reconnect the hot supply um, and then you should be all tickety boo and that's the only way if you've got these type of mixers I can think you can do it okay let's look at the causes of um, airlock okay because <clears throat> it's no good sorting this out every five minutes if it's just going to keep on happening and you really want to sort out the cause of the problem so I'll go through them one, one by one the most easiest one is to check the main water pressure at the stopcock um, most people, well, my sink again, um, my cup is a little bit full up, there's a stopcock down there, a uh, main stopcock, and what happens is a lot of people find that the pressure um, at, the, at that end is too much. So what do they do? They, they turn the main stopcock down to slow it down a bit, which is all good and well, slowing that down, but it does mean the pressure at your roof tank in the loft um, is a lot slower as well, which does mean it is possible, especially if you're running a bath, to run it out before it has a chance to fill up which introduces air and once you've got the air you've got the problem back so sometimes it's as easy as turning the main stopcock up a little bit more and giving a little bit more pressure out of that tap a lot of older people like to have it slow i know because they you know they, they, they want don't want it splashing everywhere but sometimes you just got to have a bit more pressure otherwise that is a problem that will occur to make sure your stopcock's on for your main stopcock next one would be the roof tank ball valve. Now if you go up to your main storage tank and just check that it's running fully, just push the arm down, push the ball down and make sure that you're getting the full flow, it's not blocked with anything, okay, which it can happen. Um, make sure it's got full movement and full pressure. Okay, um, now if it happens after you've used a bath 
um, and that tends to be when it does happen. You might have a system like this, which I've, I've drawn out here. Um, if you have a look at this here, and and you, you what you see is that um, here's your cold water tank, uh, and you can have a cold feed that comes down, um, and and it feeds the bath, uh, basin, and cistern. But also that because it's fed off the tank. Um, that's one big potential supply going to that tap and also obviously the hot tap comes around It's also fed from the tank Okay out of this cold feed here comes into the cold into the bottom of the hot tank And is obviously drawn out the top round to your tap But if it's a cold feed from the tank as well if you run both those taps and they're fast flowing It is possible to empty this tank right down before it's got a chance to fill up so it happens particularly if your cold feed is on the tank. Um, so the only easy way around that problem, if you find that keeps happening and your valve is filling okay, um, is to actually run the hot tap first. Let the hot tap go until you've got nearly what you'd like and then run the cold one afterwards to get it to the right temperature. And that way you won't starve that tank before it has a chance to fill up. And that's quite a common one that happens quite a lot if you've got a cold water off the tank. And the only way to check if you have is just open a bath tap and see if you can put your hand over the end of it. If you can stop the flow with your hand, um, you know that that is off the tank. If you can't stop it and it keeps forcing by, you know you're you're off the mains. Okay, but again, you've got to watch it. Even if it was off the mains, it's possible you could run the mains and the hot at the same time. And because you're running the mains pressure, um, there's not still not enough to get up to the ball cock and keep it full. So if that's something that's happened to you after a bath, recommend you run the hot one first and then cool it down with a cold one. Or if you'd rather do it the other way, safety first, run the cold one and then the hot one, but I'm always worried about having enough hot water to heat it up. But obviously you've got children in the house, do it that way around. Okay, that's just a little one I wanted to show you on there. So I'll flick my chart over now and flick it back round to me. Um, now, there's other, other things to look at as well. Um, water pressure. Um, now, if it, it can drop, just mysteriously drop away, um, and my sister had a problem where, a different sister problem, she called me about a shower that wasn't working anymore, it's an electric shower, um, and what it turned out to be was that a new housing estate had been built down the road, um, and they'd used her main to feed this new housing estate, well obviously the earth pressure had dropped way down because this, this estate was lower and it was taking all the water. Um, so she had no water pressure. I'd turn the main full on, make sure it was full on, and there was zero pressure. If you find your main's water pressure can be stopped by putting your thumb over it, then you've got seriously low water pressure and you must get onto your water company immediately because they're in charge of getting that water pressure up. You, you have a right to a minimum of a couple of bar of water pressure or at least one bar, I believe it is just under. Um, you should be allowed to get and the water company have got to provide that. So um, I got onto the water company and sure enough, they had put this new housing estate on and uh, they had to increase the pressure to my sister's house to get our water pressure back. So that's another one to look at if you find you can stop clocks on uh, and go outside, make sure also that your main stopcock in the path out or in the garden outside is also full on make sure it's turned fully on uh, and if it's still slow you know that you've got a pressure problem there ring the water company okay that that's about it really um that that was one i got caught out on with my sister with the pressure being dropped um that covers really the hot water air locking things now if your problem is more to do with you've taken a radiator off um and you've got no eating afterwards, you can't get it going. Um, or you've done something to the system, drained it out for some reason or another, put Fernox in, uh, in here, uh, filled it up and it won't go. Um, that means you've got air in the system. Most modern systems with uh, air separators and the like, uh, and a properly plumbed eating system won't airlock. But unfortunately that is not the case. Most systems aren't, <laughs> a lot of the older ones anyway, aren't properly plumbed. Like this old house I'm in here, um, it's not properly plumbed. It's, it's an old one pipe system with a, a pump thrown in and a, and a freeway valve. Um, and it's always a bit of a disaster. If I drain it out, I always get an airlock. So how do we get those out of there? Well, <clears throat> there's, a, there's a few different ways. Um, one of the first ones always make sure your little tank is full, make sure it's your little F and E tank is full of water and it's filling, okay, and the valve is okay, it's not, not dropped out. So make sure that's all working. Um, now my particular one, I always find where the air is, and I, I always find it's by the pump. 
it seems to be a place that does take you know the, this the problem now you'll see there's a little screw on there um, you've only got to undo that a fraction and sometimes you'll find it, it burbles with air and just screw it back up again uh, and that will be usually a lot of times where the air can get now on this one funny enough on this system here I mean it's a right that your father system here um you know we've got this little valve up here to try and get air out of this this line here which it does do fair enough it gets it out but nine times out of ten on this particular system i find the air is right on the tail end of that pipe there i don't know if i can quite show you it over there. it's a bit dark i'm getting my own reflection but at the back there that nut there is where i get the air and on this nut here and that way the way of doing that is you've got to be a bit brave but get your spanner out put it on the nut and undo it just a turn and then just loosen it off and you should hear the air burble out uh, and if it doesn't then it's water you know there's no air there do it back up okay um, that's that's for this particular type of system it's worth doing that around the pump because that's often where the air gets if you get air in a pump um, you get no eating whatsoever the other way of um, getting air out with a the heating system is to find your main drain valve at the lowest position of your heating system and stick a long hose pipe on it open it up and let it run and just let it run for about a minute or so and leave the heating actually on and running and it should pull the air down and out that hose pipe out to the outside okay now without looking at all your individual systems um, there are other ways uh, of getting air out again once you've done that go around and bleed all your radiators afterwards because they've probably introduced air into some or one of them um, and you'll get that out and you should, should be back to tickety boo um, but that's about it uh, I think we cover for air locking um, if you've got any questions on any other problems with air or whatever um, obviously get back to me and let me know um, anyway that's it for me Derek and 33 thanks very much for watching guys